In 5.1 day two, we're looking at key features of exponential functions, specifically identifying growth and decay and determining some values. So an exponential growth function is a function that models quantities that increase based on a fixed percent during each time period. Given an initial amount A and a rate of increase R, the amount A of T after T time, um, periods is given by, sorry, the equation a of t equals a times one minus one plus r to the t power. So this happens when a is greater than zero, so a is positive, b is greater than one, and b specifically equals one plus r, where r is that rate of increase. Okay, so there's some features here. Um, for those graphs, remember that we talked about this yesterday where there's an increasing function when B was greater than one, and then it was a decreasing function when B was a fraction, so between zero and one. So that's what's gonna happen here too. Exponential decay, so that was exponential growth. Exponential decay is when a function models quantities that decrease based on that fixed percentage. So instead of it being one plus r, notice that the equation is a times one minus r to the t power. Um, notice that a is still a positive value. And now b is essentially a proper fraction. And now B is the difference of one minus R. Remember that a rate means percentage. So if I have a rate, one represents 100% plus whatever that percent is, right? It's going up versus this is the difference between 100% and that percentage. So that value is decreasing, it's going down. So that's another way that we can see. So growth is an increasing function and decay is a decreasing function. Okay, so let's look at some examples. So for the first one, we've got the population of a large city was about 4.6 million in the year 2010 and grew at a rate of 1.3% per year over the next four years. So A is asking us what exponential equation models the population of the city over that four year period. B is asking us what will be the population in 2040 if the population increases at the same rate, right? We're making a prediction, assuming that that rate is constant. So let's look at what we're given in the problem. So we're told that the population of the large city was about 4.6 million. So 4.6, million is the initial amount. So that is our A. So notice same for decay, the initial amount is our A. So that means that A is equal to 4.6 million. I'm just going to use million in my answer. Um, and again, that's our initial amount. Um, then we are given the fact that in the year 2010, it grew at a rate of 1.3% per year over the next four years. So our rate is 1.3%. We always want to write that as a decimal. Remember that I moved the decimal two spaces to the left. So if I move the decimal one, two spaces to the left, I'm going to get 0 0.013 as that value. Then we should notice that it says that our population grew. So that means that we are looking at a growth function. So our growth function in general form was that a of t is equal to a times one plus r 
raised to the t power. So we can plug these in to identify our equation. So A was 4.6 times one plus our 0 0.013 quantity to the t power. So if I simplify that, that tells me that A of t is gonna be equal to 4.6 times 1.013 raised to the t power. Okay, so my starting amount in 2010 was 4.6. Um, that population grew at a rate of 1.3%. So I added the decimal version of 1.3% to one, the decimal version of 100% to get my new base. Okay, so that is my equation that I will use to answer the question in B. So remember that I had 4.6 million people in 2010. And the question here is asking me, what will the population be in 2040? So blank million. in 2040. So what I need to know then is how much time has passed since 2040. So that means that T would be equal to 30, right? So if I subtract 2040 minus 2010, right? There's been 30 years since um, 2010. So T is gonna be equal to 2040 minus 2010, just in case you forget later how we got that value, means that our T is 30. And so we're just gonna find A of 30. So A of 30 means we're doing 4.6 times 1.013 to the 30th power. Okay, so what I'm gonna do with this is I will type this just exactly as it looks into a scientific calculator, likely Desmos. Um, if we're on a quiz or test, remember that's the one that shows up um, in Edge Elastic. So if I type 4.6 and then times parentheses 1.013, close the parentheses, make an exponent with 30, I get about 6.78. So that means that about, 6.78 million people will be in that city in 2040. Okay, so let's add a couple more. Okay, so for example four, we're gonna determine whether each function represents an exponential growth or decay and identify the rate of growth or decay. So for A, we have a car was purchased for $24,000. The function y equals 24 times 0.8x can be used to model the value in thousands of dollars, x years after it was purchased. So they are giving us this equation, y equals 24 times 0.8 to the x. So remember that I'm looking at this value here to tell whether or not it's growth or decay. So it's going to be growth when that number um, is greater than one. It's going to be decay when that number is between zero and one. So that number is 0.8. So 0.8 in our expression here is between zero and one. And so that means that this is decay. Okay, so because that value is 0.8, we have decay. So what I wanna figure out is, this is asking us to identify the rate of growth or decay. So in this case, we're gonna have a rate 
of decay. Remember that this represents B. And we were told that B is equal to one minus R for decay. Okay, so I got that from, if I look all the way back at the first page, if I had decay, B equals one minus R, that's my rate of decay or my, the base where I can find the rate of decay. R is the rate of decay. So if we look at this, we know that B is 0.8. So 0.8 is equal to one minus R. I'm looking for R. So if I think about that, R must be equal to 0.2. So I can get that by just knowing, right? This is 80% equals 100% minus what percent? It's got to be 20. If I want to do that algebraically, I would have to subtract one from both sides. So I would get 0.8 minus one is negative 0.2 is equal to negative R. And then I would have to divide by negative one. Divide by negative one. R is equal to 0 0.2, okay, or 20%. Okay, so I don't necessarily have to have a word problem or a scenario. I can just be given an equation. So in part B, we're given the equation Y equals 35 times 1.5 to the x. Remember that we're just looking at our value for b to determine whether it's growth or decay. So that value is greater than one. So this is growth. Okay, if we look back at what b represents in terms of our rate, it's one plus r. Okay, so we're going to set our base b equal to one plus R. Okay, so since it's growth, B is gonna equal one plus our rate. So that means that 1.5 is equal to one plus R. And so if I subtract one from both sides, that tells me that R must be 1.5 minus one is 0 0.5, or that's 50%. Okay, so again, I'm looking at that value that is the base of my exponent. If that number is between zero and one, it's decay. And I use that B equals one minus R. If that value is greater than one, it's growth. And I use B equals one plus R to solve for that value. So for the last example, we have a museum that purchased a painting and a sculpture in the same year. Their changing values are modeled as shown. Find the average rate of change of the value of each work, artwork over the five-year period. Which artwork's value is increasing more quickly? So they've given us the sculpture's value as an equation and the painting's value as a graph. So notice that I can see here that the painting's value is increasing visually. I also know that the sculpture's value is increasing because this number is greater than one, right? That tells me that this is a growth function. So they want us to find the average rate of change um, over this five-year period. So by giving us a five-year period, they're telling us that they want us to find the average rate of change um, between the year they got it and five years later, okay? So find the average rate of change of the value of each artwork over the five-year period. So what that means is that they want us to have where A is zero, B would be five. Okay, so if A is zero, our B would be five. 
in order to find these values. Okay, so actually I'm gonna go back and change a color there just so that I can use that for the when I'm plugging in and we can kind of keep it organized. So A is zero, B is five over my five year period. So that means that what I need to do in order to do this is I know A and B, I need to find F of B and F of A. So F of zero and I need to find F of five. So I need to find F of zero and I need to find F of five to find the average rate of change. I need to do the same thing with G. Um, so I'm gonna call this G because I don't have um, other values. So if this is G, I need to find G of zero and G of five. Okay, so let's start with F because I'm plugging in. G is actually a little bit easier. So if I have to plug in zero into this equation, I'm plugging in 50 times 1.075 and raising that to the zero power in a calculator. Um, I don't even have to use because anything to the zero power is one. So this means that it was initially worth $50, right? Or $50,000. Um, if I look at this one when, when I have zero, so if A is zero, G of a is 40 on my graph. So that means that the painting started as $40,000. So initially they paid more for the sculpture or its value was higher. Then I need to plug in five. So 50 times 1.075 raised to the fifth power. I have to calculate that because that's a decimal. I'm not sure what that value is. Um, if I do that, I get about 71.78. Okay, so if I plug that into a calculator, I get about 71.78. Okay, remember that they're giving me this point on purpose because that's what I need, right? This is B. So then F of B is going to be 64.4. Okay, so our equation, I wrote F, sorry, G of B is gonna be 64.4. So that's worth $64,400 now. Okay, it wants to know which one's increasing faster, not which one's worth more, right? That the sculpture started out as more. So it should be worth more consistently for at least the first few years, unless the rate is higher for the painting. So we have to find the average rate of change. So we have to use this formula. So if I plug into F of B minus F of A over B minus A for the initial, um, for the painting, F of B, remember this was our B, was 71.78 and B was five, right? So I plugged in F of B and B. I'm gonna subtract, if A was zero, F of A was 50. Okay, so if I subtract that, I get 21.78 over five, which is about 4.356. Okay, so if I think about that, I was talking about thousands of dollars, right? And so that means that the value increased by, I'm going to multiply that by a thousand, so $4,356 per year. Okay, so let's look at what happens with the painting. So for the painting, we're still finding the average rate of change. So just using our function G. So B is first. So if B was five, G of B was 64.4. And then A was zero. So G of A was 40. Okay, so we've got 64.4 minus 40 over five minus zero, which means we've got 
four over five. And that gives us about 4.88, which means that the value increased by $4,880 per year. So which one is a greater average rate of change? It's the one that's actually a greater number. So the painting value is increasing at a greater rate.